All right, it's time for 2.4, which will be going through a library of functions as well as piecewise defined functions. Stuff you've seen before, but definitely need to review it and uh, expand upon it a little bit, which I love doing. All right, first off, let's go through our library of functions. We've got a handful here, to say the least. Uh, the first one here, what is that? Uh, that would be our identity function. And our equation for that would be y equals x, or you could write it as f of x equals x. Okay, excellent, wonderful. For ease going forward, I'm gonna go ahead and just write y equals, okay? But it can be written in function notation as well. The next one, that is a quadratic here, what we call is the square function. Lovely. So that would be y equals x squared. The next one here, the cube function. That would be y equals x cubed. If you'd like to go ahead and try this on your own, hit pause, see if you can remember all of them, and then let play through, all right? Uh, it's always nice to test yourself. Uh, the next one, we have the square root function, it does not look like any, that's a little better, um, and that would be y equals the square root of x. Cool, fantastic. All right, we're down into the next one here. What do we have here? That is our cube root, and that would be y equals, and then we'd have our radical with a little three right there. Awesome, next one we have is absolute value absolute value. All right, and that'd be y equals absolute value bars. Boom, donezo, excellent. The next one, we have an exponential growth function. There's also exponential decay, um, but for this one, we will, we'll just do the, the growth function so we don't get too overwhelmed here. Uh, exponential growth. All right, and that would be y equals b to the x. Oh, losing the light. And that is when b is greater than, ooh, voice crack. I'm leaving it. b is greater than, not zero, one. All right, so when that base is larger than one, we have a growth function. Excellent, okay. And the last one, that is our reciprocal function. Reciprocal function, and that would be y equals 1 over x. Woo! It's quite the library there, I'll tell you what. So although uh, we have a, a pretty robust library at this point in time, we actually have one uh, graph that we, that we left out. That is the constant function. Why might that be? Well, the reason why we did that is because... Uh, there's really an infinite amount of constant functions, so um, we didn't want to give one particular graph and say like this is it. Uh, so let's go and do an example. A constant function is just like a y equals say three or two or any real number. So really it's y equals b where b is any real number. And an example of a graph would be something like this. I would have, I'll change marker for the actual graph. Um, just when I said y equals three, one, two, three, boom, that would be three. All right, so it's a horizontal line. That is our, uh, that is our constant function, right? Y equals some number, any real number. Cool. All right, so now that we have our, our whole library, right? Uh, let's start looking at piecewise defined functions. So a uh, piecewise defined function is when a function is defined by different equations on different parts of its domain. That's when it's called a piecewise defined function. Lovely. Again, you've seen these before a little bit, uh, but we're going to work with some here and uh, probably ask a few uh, different questions than you're used to. So this piecewise uh, function is defined as what we have here, right? Three different parts. Um, so we want to find f of negative 2, f of 0, and f of 
3. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, how am I going to find f of negative 2? Let's start with that. Well, if I'm doing f of negative 2, I can't just plug it into any one of them. I've got to find that one that fits its domain. So here I would have x is less than 0. That would fit, right? Negative 2 is less than 0, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in here. which gives me 4. So there's my answer for that one. So let's see here. How about f of 0? Well, if I plug in 0, which one of these, which one has the domain that would include 0? Well, that would be the one that says x equals 0. So that means it's just 2. That's a constant function portion of that. All righty. And then lastly, f of 3. Well, hmm. Let's see here. The one that's greater than 0 would be the one that would include 3 in its domain, right? So I would have 3 plus 2, which equals 5. So I just substituted it in there. We're good to go. Part A done. Excellent. All right, so now to determine the domain of f, um, I often find this a little bit easier to do after I've graphed it, but why don't we'll do it here, and then we'll also talk about it on the graph. So let's see. Um, I have less than 0, so we know that x is less than 0, we know that it's equal to 0, and x is greater than 0. So that actually includes everything, so we're really talking negative infinity to infinity. There are no gaps in the domain. Now if this equals 0 part was not here, it would be negative infinity to 0 not including 0, and then pick back up not including 0 to positive infinity. But because it has every x value, it's all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. So let's go ahead and graph this, and we'll also look at it visually. Um, so I like to pick some points um, when, I'm, when I'm doing this here. So uh, first I'm going to pick uh, 0. So 0 squared is going to be 0. And then another point on this quadratic, uh, less than 0, so how about negative 1 would be another one. So negative 1, if I plug that in, I get positive 1. And if you wanted to do another one, we could do negative 2, and then we'd get uh, positive 4 as our output. Actually, we already did negative 2 plugged in, so we should have known that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plot this portion of it. So I put in uh, 0, 0. That is an open circle when I graph that, right? Uh, and then I'm going to have negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 4. And you may have known just how to graph this um, because of our library of functions, uh, but I think points often help, and I will do my best. All right, that wasn't too bad. Cool. So there's our first part of the graph. Lovely. Um, now I'm going to do some different colors here. You don't have to do that, but just to showcase the different uh, pieces of this piecewise function. So we'll do this next one in blue. Um, so it's just when x equals 0, our output value, our function value, is 2. So it's just one point right there. That's it. That's a closed circle. Cool. Um, and then a last one we'll do, I'll go with green on this one. So again, I'm going to have to substitute in some points. So I'm going to plug in 0, but remember 0 is not a point on this. It's, it, it'll be an open circle for that. So if I plug in 0, my output is 2. Uh, if I plug in, let's say, 1, and we know this is a linear function, so it's just going to be a straight line. If I plug in 1, um, I'm going to get 3. And I, we can really stop there. With the quadratic, I like to have a, a few points to show the curvature of it. You may, again, have known just the shortcut, you know, you're counting up. Um, and that's fine, too, as long as you're getting the right thing. So I'm going to plug in the point 0, 2, all right, which is right here. So I have an open circle around that. Let me get a little closer. And then I've got 1, 3. And since its slope is 1, from our knowledge of linear equations, we can just go up one over one and wee, just like that. Excellent. Wonderful. Cool. Yay. That was pretty awesome. So we've graphed it. Happy. Now, let's talk about that domain as I try to recenter this. There we go. So that domain, now we can see on the graph, well, it, it keeps going up and to the left. So it's infinitely going to the left. It's infinitely going to the right. And there are no gaps because you have this solid dot here uh, where there were the, you know, the open circles. So there's, it's, you know, all the way through. Cool. So negative infinity to infinity. All righty. Now we're going to use the graph to find our range. So a range, where does it start? What's the lowest it goes? It looks like it goes all the way to zero, but does not include zero. 
So we have zero. Well, that's the end of third period. Uh, so, and then does it ever stop going up? Does it have any gaps as we move up? It's, it's, uh, we're solid here and it keeps going up. It keeps going, it goes to infinity. Awesome. So this is not like some kind of a break here. Now, uh, because we have this function in pink, or this part of the piecewise function um, in that pink color uh, that would you know, bridge that gap, so to speak. So we're from zero all the way to infinity. Lovely. So just to reiterate about that um, comment about the range, about that jump, that is a common misconception there that people are like, ooh, yeah, I gotta take that out of my range. Mm -mm. Okay, there's graph going on there. So is f continuous on its domain? That's a good question. Um, in this case, no. We have what's called a jump discontinuity. It comes down the parabola as we're moving from left to right, jumps up to that single point, right, in the constant part of the function, and then goes into our linear portion of the function. So jump discontinuity. Sound it out, there we go. All righty, wonderful. All right, so we're gonna just do one last problem here. You know, only two examples, they are, they are pretty large examples though. This time we're given the graph, we're going to write the piecewise function uh, whose graph is shown, and then we'll do the same type of questions. Uh, looks like we got one different one with the uh, locating the intercepts. All right, let's do it. So let's start with our function here. Um, these are always, always, fun to write, my favorite. I'm gonna go from left to right, I would suggest you do the same. So here, uh, if I'm starting with this portion of the equation, I'm at negative three, seven, and we got ourselves a linear equation, right? Um, and let's see if we can see that slope there. It looks like it's negative two, down two over one, down two over one, down two over one, yep, okay. So I have a negative two slope, and then what's my y-intercept that is positive one? So negative two x plus one, and then where are we defining this? This is between negative three for my x value all the way to positive one. So from negative three, including that, to positive one, not including that. Okay, first one done, I like it. And actually rather than a comma here, I'm gonna go ahead and use if, my apologies there. Um, Use the if instead of that comma. All right, the next one. Uh, looks like we have ourselves a uh, just a, a point there, kind of like the last problem. So when x equals one, our output is two. So this would be a two here if x equals one. Awesome. And this last portion here, well, it appears to me to be a quadratic. Okay. Um, and perhaps maybe if we had, I think we should have had one more point in there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add that for us. Okay, I added this point in here. I feel like it should have been there to be a little bit more clear that it's not a constant rate of change, right? Um, so if we're going, when we see going up three over one, then up five over one, that clues us into that quadratic, uh, which would then appear to then, if it were to extend, it'd be at the origin there. So that is going to be our parent function for a square function. Um, so if x squared if x is greater than one, it is an open circle, so it's just gonna be greater than one there. All right, so it really helps to know those parent functions, the behavior of those functions, so we can look out for those. I think the lines and the points are always easy to see, but once we get into quad, you know, a square function, your quadratics, your cube functions, so on and so forth, it, know, it really helps to know what they look like as we're trying to write that equation. Very challenging otherwise. But this looks good to me. Um, so let's move on. Let's find f of negative two. And I can either do that from the graph or I can do that from the equation. Um, since we did it from the, well, the equation before, let's do it from the graph. f of negative two would give me five. So I went and just found that point on there. And we could verify that here. Um, negative two is within this domain. And if I plug negative two in here, I'm gonna get positive four plus one is five. All righty, f of one. Well, where's that gonna happen on my graph? That's right here, so boom, two. And if I have f of two, that's gonna be right here, which has the point four. Great, so you can use the equation, the, the, the piecewise function equation. We can use the graph. 
we can we can use both. It's good to be it's good to be good at both. All right, determine the domain of f. I like using the graph when I find domain and range of a piecewise function. So farthest I go is negative three, and I'm including that point because it is solid. And then I'm, as I'm moving to the right and going down, um, I do have a, it looks like another jump discontinuity, but I do have this point here, so it's continuing through and goes on forever and ever and ever to infinity. It continues moving right. So there's my domain. Um, how about some intercepts? Well, how about, uh, let's start with our x-intercept. This one is actually uh, a little tricky. It's between, but I think we can uh, figure that out, that that is going to be at the one-half uh, mark there because uh, of our slope that we have, which was negative two. So it's going to split that right in half. So x-intercept is going to be uh, one half comma zero. And then our y-intercept, we already talked about our y-intercept of our uh, first equation, part of our equation there, and that would be at one. So zero comma positive one. Awesome. So how about our range? We're going to use the graph to find the range. Well, how low do we go? We start at negative 1, not including negative 1. And then it looks like we go on up, just like the last one. Yeah, this still is uh, part of the graph, so we don't have to skip over anything. Um, and, oh, and over here, it goes on forever and ever, ever up, right? It does stop over here, but this graph is continuing on forever. Uh, so we go to infinity. I love it. Excellent. Wonderful. The graph really, really helps when we're talking domain and range, in my opinion. Um, is this continuous? Once again, we have that jump discontinuity at x equals 1. So no jump discontinuity at x equals 1. So it's not continuous on the domain. That is it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I sure did. Um, and I will see you guys later in the next video, in class, all over the place. Who knows? All right. Have a wonderful day. America, freedom, rock and roll, Costco. Andrew Dog, Jenny on the gram.